This is LPGOB. Listen up, children. You are listening to Fem House Radio. I said, listen up, children. On Diplo's Revolution, Sirius XM. A wonderful night is made as much by the dancers as the music. <laughs> Guided as much by the spirit of joy in the room as by the hand which reaches for the next record. Each of us has a role in tonight's experience. We all play in the band. This is LPGOB and I founded Fem House, a 501c3 foundation and educational platform that teaches the technical areas of music making for women, non-binary, trans, and other marginalized gender identities. Every week I will be interviewing and spotlighting women in music while bringing you the best dance tunes from around the world. Our next guest on Fem House Radio is DJ producer Sam Blackie, who has performed all over the world from Mexico to Ibiza to Bali. She recently launched her own label, Stabby Records, where she is releasing some dance floor original heaters. Her funky yet soothing blend of house, techno, and tribal music Music has gained traction in the underground and burner dance culture, getting your slots at Miami Music Week, Coachella after parties, and the jungles of Guatemala and Vietnam, to name a few. Sam, thank you for being on the show. Hi, girl. I'm so happy to finally <laughs> get to talk to you. Thank same, you. same, same. So tell us your origin story. How did you become an electronic music producer? So a lot of people don't know that I lived in Australia for six years. I went there to study abroad for one semester in college and then stayed and stayed and stayed and stayed. And um, Amazing. I actually got my degree in marketing. So I ended up putting on some music festivals out there. Back in the day, the big one was Stereo Sonic, and we did that. And then I slowly left that and became a booking agent. So... I was behind the scenes in music for a long time before I moved back to the States. And I started dabbling in DJing um, just through that and like my best friends own clubs. And they're like, yeah, you can spin, Sam. And so I played in Australia a bit and then I moved back to LA and uh, started in LA with more like modeling DJ jobs because I was a model. So it was like, you DJ the Wild Fox party or the guest party or the blah, 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 like a fashion label. Um, so I was like literally DJing in stores sometimes. So it wasn't, it wasn't my dream at all, but it's been a long progression to get from there to festivals, tours, my own shows, headlining clubs. Like it took a while. Amazing. Good for you. And I, you know, I come from the industry side of things first as well. I work for a concert promoter. So I got to learn like, what is a booking agent? What is a manager? What is a promoter? And I feel like that's really benefited me greatly. And so do, do you find that that has, are you really grateful for that experience on the industry side before becoming an artist? Oh yeah. hundred percent. Like you get to, you, like, you know, what's expected, you know what I mean? And you're not going in there blind. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people are only artists and that's yep. great. And that's totally fine. But like, I like, you know, what we were talking about to like be in control or to be in the know and the fact that yeah. like I can tell like if something's not right or I can help and be like, hey, like we actually need this or whatever. Like I think it is so beneficial. I don't think it's necessary. I just think it's like good totally. for us. <laughs> so how do you balance your modeling and DJ career? Because as like you are like you are really a, a for real touring DJ and like, so that keeps you on the road. And so how do you balance that with modeling? Like, which also is a, is a, something that you have to do while I mean, moving around. Well, do you book look, around like, it? I've been trying for the last three years to totally get out of modeling and only oh, do really? like sponsorships and like huge jobs. Um, so Why I've that? done that because like, first of all, I'm getting older. Second of all, like, you know, the money and the funness like it's not fun to model it's not fun at all so i was like i did it for six years like i had a great time i had a good run i was already really old when i entered into modeling i was 25 and i was you know and that's doing... old yeah dude they're like 16 and so i was doing like air postal <laughs> like abercrombie campaigns with like 17 year old kids i'm like okay so i <laughs> I, I don't have to. I don't have to juggle the modeling because I don't do it. So like, it took me a long time, and it was actually really, really friggin' hard to be taken seriously, as you know, in general, as a female DJ and producer and artist. But like, because I came from a modeling background, girl, I can't even tell you. Like, legitimately, people who booked me overseas, like big shows, far away, very expensive flights, etc. 
like after I played were like oh my god we didn't think you could actually DJ we just like thought you were hot and you would get people here and I was like well you're welcome I was gonna I I thank you for talking about this I was really wondering your perspective on this because this is something that I deeply struggle with and I'm okay I'm not a model I will never be a model let me just for the record I know I'm not a model however (laughs) however I struggle with so when I started like I was I was in an electronic band that's like weird sci-fi synth like art experimental funny hilarious band that I loved but like you know I was doing like sound design like midi clocking seven synths on stage and like we wore these like weird hot like sci-fi outfits and it it was a blast okay but then when I started doing like getting into the electronic world like DJing and like making like music for the dance floor you know I started going I went through this like really intense so previous to that I would just like my closet was like fun and sparkly and glam and wild and you know sparkles and I just like love like it was so easy for me to get dressed and effortless and just like I want everything to be fun and you know and then when I started being a producer I started dressing like a boy like the only things I wanted to be in like I showed yeah I showed up to this one I went on tour with this one DJ and I showed up for like a a promo shoot with him before literally Sam, I was dressed identical to him. From my shoes to my jacket, actually could have been the same person. And that's what really hit me like, like, whoa, I really feel like in order to be taken seriously, I have to look like a man. And I I hate that I'm literally giving into the patriarch. I hate that I think that way. I hate that. And I just don't know how to overcome it. Dude, I think you're so past the point that you you are totally established. You are killing it. Your music is killing it. You are booking shows. Who gives a fuck what you wear? You're past that. You're not, you're not trying. You're, that's like, and that, that that's not even necessarily true for like a person trying to climb up and like get get into the scene. Like you're in the scene deep, 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 deep. You're good. You can wear whatever you want. I think. I mean, I wear whatever I want. Sometimes I wear. And I said, I literally. This is one of the reasons I fucking love you. Is because, like, you are so who you unap- – unapologetically who you are. And, like, even how you handle, like, your handle, you know, just like, okay, fuck you guys, whatever. I'm going to keep doing me. Like, instead of being like, oh, yeah. like, because I'm so beautiful you didn't think I could DJ? Like, now how do I change who I am? Like, I love that you were just like, keep going. No, and I'm like, you know, I went through a couple different teams before I I, I got the one that I have now. And, like, they, they were like – fuck like anything modeling delete every single photo of you ever in a bikini ever modeling ever looking hot dress like this I was like uh no bro like that's I'm I'm from San Diego I'm skinny I like being in the heat I'm gonna be in bikinis most of the places I DJ are tropical you want me to wear a fucking sweatsuit not gonna happen like I'm sorry (laughs) I am fucking here for this because this is feminism, your choice to choose. And I, oh, I like, I hate, I really, I have like, this is not a very nice, and I'm working on how I talk to myself because I want to have like way more positive self talk. But like, I'm like mad at myself for like really confronted. Like, I feel like I have to wear like baggy shirts and like, don't look at my body, don't look, don't look what I look like. And I just, oh, I hate that I do that. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like the the ant, it's, you know, the same the same thing is controlling me that I'm, like, trying to work against. It's just, like, it's this huge mind fuck. I talk about this that's with Sophie like, like every a, day. Yeah, that's, like, a vibe. Like, that's, like, that works for Alice in Wonderland. That works for Billie Eilish. That doesn't mean that you have to dress like that. <laughs> you got to wear what you want. Nerval fucking looks like LMFAO 10 years ago. They don't give a shit. They're still wearing their crazy stuff, and they have babies. Like... <laughs> that's the I, other thing is, like, the other thing that I'm already preparing myself for is like so I became I'm obsessed with with uh Anna Leno I'm obsessed with her because when she had a baby like she would she would in her Instagram stories uh it would be her like you know like saving her breast milk in this little cooler that she would travel with to like get to the show and then travel back in time to like get it to her baby and like I I didn't you saw no other visual representation of a successful DJ who is also a mom you know and yeah. like just seeing that like I remember the first time I almost like actually this was the first time I saw this like five years ago or whatever. I actually almost started crying because I was like, it just hit me to my core. Like I didn't even think I could do both because I, you know, like it just didn't fit in the, like in this box that I had created for myself. Yeah. And it was, it's so inspiring to see that. No, it was crazy. She, she, oh my God. What did she post one time? Like, I think she DJ Coachella pregnant or she DJ something. She did. Um, she did Coachella. Yeah. 
insane. And then I'll never forget she posted something. It was so hilarious. I was like, I'm definitely copying this when I get a baby. When I get a baby. Oh, my God. <laughs> when I get pregnant. She posted, like, from the front in, like, a shirt, like a, you know, Alice in Wonderland vibe shirt. And then and and then was, like, reality. And the next one was her on the side, like, huge. But, like, in the front, <laughs> like, you couldn't tell she was pregnant. I was like, oh, I love that. <laughs> that is amazing. I honestly, like, the reason that I want to grow my platform is – for this one simple like daydream I have is that like I want to get as big as I possibly can get like as far as like people coming to a show and then I want to get pregnant as fuck I want to be like nine months pregnant and I want to stand on the D-Day booth and I want to take off my shirt so I'm just like in my like my sports bra my big old like milked up titties and my <laughs> huge ass belly and I want to be like this is what a producer looks like like truly yeah. I <laughs> like I want to do that so bad <laughs> you will you will girl you will I'll be there I'll be there <laughs> and you'll be like let's go <laughs> just like huge ass just like oh I can't wait oh my god um, I love that. wait so I want to hear more about your new world series did you like how did you when did you start doing that how did you think to do it like it was it's it was so it's so cool and are you going to keep doing them well okay so I watch a lot of Circle. I don't know how to pronounce it or Circle, whatever. And they I know exactly do- what you're talking about. It's amazing. It's insane. And I it's was like, insane. the first one that like I caught my eye was like probably you know way late in the game, but it was Disclosure, and I watched the whole thing, and I love Disclosure, and I was like, fuck, this is like kind of boring. Like I was like, I want to make this like more fun, and like I have totally. access. Like thank God we could we could still travel to Mexico because. Mexico is like my number one um, country or, or cities besides America and LA for like my fans and DJing wise. And like, that's where I DJed the most before COVID. So I have a ton of friends in like all the cities. And uh, I just put it on Instagram and was like, yo, is there any uh, videographers in Mexico that want to like get in on this project with me? And like, boom, straight away, one of my best friends was like, I know this guy, uh, Rafa, he just filmed a bunch of stuff here. Like, here's his info. Never met. Um, and we met up in Acapulco to do the first one. And uh, the team was just Sick. so fun. And like and like I said, like I had access to like the clubs that are not open, that are gorgeous, like on right. cliffs. One of them you have to take only to get there by boat or jet ski, like in the middle of Puerto Vallarta. Like, what? I knew all these cool places. And I was like, I'm so bored. Like, I, unfortunately, I didn't get into Twitch. Like, I'm not really techy, and I just like didn't like doing live streams. I did like two or three of them on Instagram, and they blocked me because I use a song or whatever. But it, not even that. I just, I just like it's not yeah. for me. Like, I don't, I don't like Dude, doing it. It's not. I love it's you guys. <laughs> Uh, Abracadabra, Blondis, your show, all yeah. these girls, like everyone doing it is so sick, but I just couldn't get behind it. And uh, I also got rid of my decks, which I need to get new ones. But um, so I was like, I'm going to do this instead. And, you know, I just did it for fun. And I just wanted, because I do my stabby mixtapes, you know, like I try to do one once a month on SoundCloud for people. And I was like, why don't I make it visual? And so it's like half me being me partying and be like, ah, like, and then. <laughs> half like a beautiful place because no one could travel so I was like hey look at what things look like totally. out here totally so, do you remember uh, this like which is exactly escapism is what everybody was looking for so that is I mean it was such exactly. a good idea I loved it way so cooler I, than doing a twitch stream <laughs> it was, yeah it was so fun it was so much fun man <laughs> what is it what is your favorite venue party or festival you have played now that you are like full-blown touring all over the world what is what is the best spot Dude, that's really, really, really hard. But um, I know, I know. Okay, a couple. My favorite venue ever in life was this club called Lulu in Mexico City. I literally, I like had a residency there for like two years. Favorite club in the entire world, I think. Wow. And then um, I loved, I love playing in Bali. Like they have so much, such good clubs. Like they have all beach clubs. That's totally my vibe. Tulum beach clubs. I love playing outside. Um, my favorite show was uh, in San Miguel de Allende. There's a festival called Soy Ser, and they do it all across the world. It's kind of like it's kind of like Mayan Warrior or something. But um, okay. I played with like I got to play with Clapton, and I was like, ah! 
<laughs> so I freaked out. Um, blonde you are kidding me. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, like on stage with him was <laughs> like shaking. Um, so that was a highlight for sure. Plus the town is gorgeous. That's the town where Lee Boss and Chloe just got married. So no way. It's like stunning, super cool, like very old Mexico. It's supposed to be spiritual and like it's amazing. So it was there. And then um, another super fun show was my friend's festival. It's called Elements Festival. They move around a lot, um, kind of like desert. I Hearts think I'm playing fun. that this year. Is that in okay. – Yeah. Ele- yes, I've never yeah. played it. Oh, good. So that's a good okay. one. Yeah, that was super fun. And me, it was me, Fisher, and Disclosure on the fire stage. And we just had the best time ever. And then Damien Lazarus was like uh, on a different one. We went over there after. And it was so fun. It was like in the booms, like eight hour drive in the middle of nowhere in New York. So that was great. Okay, so your life sounds incredible. <laughs> what is yours, girl? Just based on that one question, amazing. Tell us more about your label. What kind of releases can we see coming from Stabby Records? Yes. Okay. So that was a big, ballsy, random leap I chose to take. Um, so it's I have a lot more coming. I have an EP that's going to be finished with a bonus track. So right now I've got Too Late and Body Out. Uh, coming next is Paradise. After that is another one. Um, and then there's the bonus track. So the EP will come out. And then I'm just like, I'm putting it out there to gather like women, you know, it doesn't have to be only women, but like that, you know, I'm finding a lot of female artists, you know, some of them like Mary drop-ins and some dope chicks that like yes. I've, actually, I've talked to them for a couple of years. I didn't even know like as fans and they're like now DJing and doing great stuff. They learned to produce during the pandemic and all these people are popping up everywhere who have known me and, and reached out to me in the past. And I'm like, send me your shit. Like, send it, you know? So it's just the vibe. So awesome. Is going to be similar to my sound. Like, it's pretty wide umbrella of music that I like and music that I play and that I put out. Like, it's all house, but, you know, tech house, tribal house. Like, I mean, there's so many different genres. It's going to be pretty wide. You know what I mean? But if I like it. So rad that you are putting yourself in the role of gatekeeper and then you're opening the door for other people, you know, who who need that opportunity um other especially you know other women right now i think i think that is really awesome i completely support that fem house completely supports that good fem for house. you <laughs> <laughs> and then finally what advice would you give your younger self dude okay <laughs> i would give my younger self advice to chill the f out and just like the best advice i ever got was that stress or worrying just causes you to stress twice. So just don't like, don't worry. And also I would have taught my, told myself to do shit earlier. You know, I had a lot of fun before Mm -hmm. I started getting serious. I loved my time in college. I love my time in Australia. I wish I figured out that I wanted to do this sooner. Um, that's, that's it. I mean, Although I will challenge you to say that it seems like your entire path journeyed you to this moment, exactly where you should be now, because, you know, going into the music industry, learning about that side of things, becoming a booker, and then coming back, learning how to play to a club, and then getting ready to finally release your own records, and then starting your label, it honestly, it seems like you needed to do the one thing to get to the next thing, and and I commend you for that. Yeah, I mean, everything happens for a reason, cheese, 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 (laughs) it's true. (laughs) It's well, thank you, thank you so much for being a guest on Fem House Radio. I am a huge fan. I love, I love everything you stand for. I love what you represent. I love that you are who you are, and I respect the shit out of that. I love you so much. Thank you for having me. I've wanted to be on your show since it started, and I can't wait to meet you. And thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you. Listen up, children. You are listening to Fem House Radio. I said, listen up. Children. On Diplo's Revolution, Sirius XM. A wonderful night is made as much by the dancers as the music can have. Guided as much by the spirit of joy in the room as by the hand which reaches for the next record. Each of us has a role in tonight's experience. We all play in the band. This is LPGOB and I founded Fem House, a 501c3 foundation and educational platform that teaches the technical areas of music making for women, non-binary, trans, and other marginalized gender identities. Every week I will be interviewing and spotlighting women in music while bringing you the best dance tunes from around the world. world, world, world.